One of the hardest things to learn when you're just starting out is how to interpret sonar data. Even more frustrating is that learning generally just takes time, waiting for the day when it just clicks. It really all comes down to experience. Well, what if we try to look at some examples and see where that takes us? Maybe seeing one or two point clouds will help you out with using software like Keras to identify data issues and recognize objects. Let's give it a shot. First of all, let's talk about what a point cloud is. The Rezon 7125 SV2 multi-beam sonar has 512 beams that we frequently use in equidistant mode. Equidistant mode basically spaces those beams out evenly on the seafloor over a swath angle of 140 degrees. Let's say we're surveying in 40 meters of water at about 7 knots or 3.6 meters per second. Let's also say that the Rezon sonar is pinging about 20 pings per second. The resulting data set is going to show one ping containing 512 soundings spaced out over a swath width of 110 meters, with every ping spaced by about 20 centimeters. Check out the math module that we did to learn how to do these calculations in detail. If you look at a ping in the Keras Subset Editor 2D window, you'll get something like this. It's hard to isolate just a single ping, but this is pretty close to it. Each of these red dots is a sounding, which is the resulting depth generated by the sonar for each of the 512 beams. You can see that each sounding has a ping number or profile, a beam number, a time, and a depth. There are also some other columns, but we'll stick with those for now. If I scroll through the list and select each of these soundings, you'll see the blue dot or highlighted sounding start to jump from right to left. Note that the beam number is decreasing, but the profile and time are staying the same. This is because we are selecting different soundings within the same ping. Okay, that was a good start, but we need to look at this data set as a whole in order to find those treasure chests that we're after. Let's go back to the 2D window and grab more than just one ping. First, you can see the long teal line at the top, which shows the ship track line. The box shows the data that we want to grab for the visualization, and the yellow cheese slice is our selection. Watch as we make the cheese slice wider. It grabs more of the nearby pings until you sort of get a thick slice of the data. If we move that slice around, we can see the seafloor change as the ship progresses along this track line. This allows you to scan the line and look for errors or interesting features. One thing I like to do is make the slice real narrow and scan through the line real fast, like going through a flipbook fast enough that it looks like an animation. You certainly don't have to do it this way, but this fast scanning just kind of makes sense to me. You might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, what is this guy talking about flipbooks for? It's 2016, the year of the hoverboard and Pokemon Go. Surely we have some sort of more advanced way to visualize data. Well, that brings us to the 3D window. Here, we can see the entire chunk of data we covered with our box in all three dimensions, colored by depth. This gives you a representation of the sea floor as it looked at that time from the sonar's perspective. If I zoom way in, you can start to see our pings in neat little rows all spaced according to ping rate. You can also see these waves, which seem to all be the same size and follow the ship, even when the ship turns slightly. At this point, your hydrographer senses should be tingling, as it's highly unlikely that the seafloor has these ripples that follow the ship. Strange wobbles that are dependent on the motion of the ship generally mean that we have a problem with our data that should be examined further. If you twist your 3D view around so that the chunk of data is facing you, you can get a view of the data that sort of mirrors the 2D view we looked at earlier. Here, we can see all the pings in rows extending away from us as the ship moved along the line. If we move along the line, we'll start to see little differences in depth that look like rocks or pockmarks in the sea floor. Some of these we saw when we scanned through the data flipbook style in 2D view. So what are these things? Are they just more problems with our data that need to be addressed? Or are they real objects that we need to consider? So we've left out a critical part to this discussion, surfaces. They're one of our primary tools for interpreting data and critical to our data analysis. It's also a big topic, so I'll be discussing them in the next video on data visualizations. Thanks for watching, and good luck out there.